How satisfying is extramarital coitus? Most of the women respond at uh, the same rate as in marital intercourse. Sometimes they report more satisfying orgasms and multiple orgasms. Maybe this is because the more responsive women are having affairs or a new partner proves to be more exciting and a new situation is more exciting. Marriage, ladies and gentlemen, struggles with a monster. And that monster is habit. Habit. And if you are smart, you will remember that. Look, did you ever notice how American women compare with Oriental women? You know, an American woman beautifies herself when she goes out. But at home, she puts in the curlers, and she puts in the this, and she, she sticks in all the peculiar things, and she wears her worst clothes. The Oriental woman beautifies herself when she stays home. What would happen if a husband said to his wife, look, tonight, I want you to set the best china on the table, put on your lovely yellow gown. She says, who's coming for dinner? <laughs> He says, a very important guest is coming. So she dresses up, she sets the table, eight o'clock arrives, she's all ready, you know, and in marches the husband. She says, well, where's the important guest? He says, here I am. She says, drop dead. <laughs> that is why it is psychologically a good thing for a husband and wife to take a vacation from each other for a little while for about 10 or 12 years. Now, uh, when the Kinsey report on men, when the Kinsey report on men first came out, I was predicting that Dr. Kinsey would find that women are definitely more faithful than men. And everybody thought that I was accusing men of being impure and being beasts and maniacs. This isn't true. Of course women are more faithful than men. They are designed to be. This is nature's design. There are many reasons for it. First of all, men are exposed to more, to more stimuli to cause them to respond. Ads, films, songs, books are all aimed at the perfumes the women wear. Taboo, my sin, follow me, <laughs> unfinished business. Have you heard of the perfume Surrender? There's a new one coming out called Fight Back. <laughs> one fellow walked into a department store to buy his girlfriend some perfume. He said to the sales girl, how much is that, please? She said, $40 an ounce. It's called perhaps. He said, for $40 an ounce, it should be absolutely. <laughs> if you want to blame anybody, blame nature. Because nature is interested in procreation. Nature is interested in having as many children as possible. It is lavish in making and protecting the child. For example, it gives a woman two ovaries. You can become pregnant with one ovary, but it gives you two, just in case one should go wrong. It gives a man two testes. Well, actually, all he needs is a quarter of a tiny inch of one and can be just as virile and just as, just as good as if he had two. It just wants to assure that children will be born. A woman has one egg cell. Notice the difference why men are more highly sexed. Women have one single egg cell that can be fertilized at any one time. How many sperm cells? How many sperm cells are there in one teaspoonful, half a teaspoonful of spermatic fluid? How many? 200 million. Men have so much to give. <laughs> and they are so eager to give it. 200 million sperm cells in any one production. Do you know that there are enough sperm cells in one teaspoonful to impregnate every woman in the world? And some men are actively engaged in this as a project. <laughs> By the way, tell me, will you please, how many, how many sperm cells does it take to become pregnant? Out of the 200 million, one, one single one. So be careful. Now, then two, there are other reasons why women are more faithful. Then two, there are social consequences that are much stricter on women than on men. Aside from everything else, you would have to find women more faithful than men for the very reason that women bear the child. A man, you see, can go about his business and forget about the whole thing. But nine months later, she has the evidence. Right there, a woman bears the child. Uh, they tell a delightful story about one girl who reported to her college dean that she was pregnant. And they, she said it was one of the boys in the school. The dean sent for the boy. 
He brought him in. The boy looked at the girl. He said, do you know this girl? He said, yes. Well, she says she's pregnant. Yes. But she says you're the father. Yes. Is it true? Yes. He said, well, what are you going to do about it? He says, I apologize. <laughs> In that little story, you have the whole essence of why men's and women's reactions differ as they do. Obviously, our sex behavior is not limited to intercourse. In addition to petting, we must look at such practices as homosexuality and masturbation. Let's take this problem of homosexuality first. How widespread is homosexuality? Let me define the word. Homosexuality refers to sex relations or sex activity among members of the same sex. It is not as widespread among women as among men. And the Kinsey report points out that one out of every seven women have had homosexual activity at some time or another. One out of every two to three men have had homosexual activity. Among single women, the number who have had homosexual experience is 26%. Among married women, 3%. 71% of the women who've had homosexual affairs have had only one or two partners. 22% of the males had 10 partners or more. Homosexuality is greater among college and graduate female students. This is the one place where education shows a difference. The social pressure against homosexuality is tremendous. The ridicule and the persecution that follows a person to the end of his days is beyond description. We are actually, according to Kinsey's findings, at the snake pit stage of the game in understanding and treating homosexuality in America. Kinsey points out that there are far more people exclusively homosexual than we believed, and that our attitudes toward them is barbarian and ridiculous. They tell about one man, for example, who came to a psychiatrist and says, Doctor, you must help me. I have a tremendous sex drive for horses. He says, horses? Male or female? He says, what do you think, I'm queer? <laughs> and with all this persecution, and with all this attitude, and with all this ridicule, nevertheless, Kinsey finds that one-third to one-half, one out of every two American males are or have been homosexual to some degree at one time or another in their lives. Dr. Kinsey questions whether these people may be justly considered abnormal, queer, or above all, immoral. Now look, we're all born with some bisexual components, every one of us. The average male is 80% male, 20% female. Just as nature does nothing either or, are there such things as people who have blue eyes and brown eyes? Of course not. There are people who have dark blue eyes and light blue eyes and thousands of shades of blue. And the same thing here. Every one of us has some bisexual quality. If it isn't too great, it never gives us any great problem. I was saying this in my class one day, and one student said, bisexual? He said, I'm trisexual. I said, what's that? He said, I'll try anything once. <laughs> I think the question we should ask is not, are you homosexual? The question should be, how homosexual are you? And thus, we all would range from very little to very great. And when it becomes over-dominant over or predominant, then we have the exclusively homosexual person. This doesn't mean that one out of every two men who've had homosexual affairs are homosexual. Of course not. It means that by nature, they were expressing their bisexual drive. And I believe that the other 50% would probably have expressed it too, except that they have been so heavily hammered by society, that this is queer, and this is wrong, and this they must not do. Now, what is the truth about masturbation? Here we come to a field where if I said nothing else tonight, you will have spent a very worthwhile hour. Throughout recorded history, masturbation has been condemned as a vicious, immoral practice. 63% of all women, according to the Kinsey Report, practice masturbation. 98% of all men. 63 98. It is less among religious women. 41% practice masturbation. Excuse me, I didn't define what it is, did I? Masturbation refers to bringing oneself to a sexual climax through self-play, self-stimulation. Now, a practice that is supposed to cause such things as pimples, loss of weight, stooped shoulders, fatigue, 
poor eyesight, insomnia, dyspepsia, cancer, impotence, feeble-mindedness, and fallen arches. It has gone by the horrible, spine-chilling term of self-abuse. Can you imagine a boy or girl who's been practicing masturbation suddenly reading about it and find out that they've been abusing themselves all these years? The great damage that this rotten talk has produced, that these lies have produced, is where the harm lies in masturbation. Dr. Kinsey has said that 98% of all American males masturbate, some only during adolescence, many throughout their whole lives, including marriage. And he says it's only 98% because there are a few males who haven't enough sex energy to bother. <laughs> or some who begin intercourse so early they don't have to. And some who are just too tired for anything, that's all. <laughs>